All right. Hello everybody and thanks for joining the MOOC TV channel right now. And we are here with my dad, the inventor of the MOOC, and myself, I'm the one running the show a little bit. Um, we have been getting so many questions about what the MOOC is, how the MOOC works, just in general. We have, a, it's been about a year since we opened, right? Yeah. And it's been really fun, but we've been getting a lot of the same questions, and so we decided just to like hammer them all down in a video so you guys can see it and refer to it if you have any questions to later. All right, so I do kind of want to get a little bit of our background story first here. Um, how how did this even start? How did you end up with this lure, Dad? <laughs> well, I, I retired four years ago and uh, congratulations. Yeah, and uh, been a life lifelong fisherman. Spent a lot of time up in the Eastern Sierra and just through time learned how to fish with lead core and troll and cat and just fly fish, all that. So. Uh, when I was retired, I had I had a lot of time, and my home lake is June Lake. I keep my boat on the marina there, and uh, I just wasn't catching fish one day, and I was like just bored, and actually not, I shouldn't even say one day, probably three days, hadn't caught a fish, oh. and so um, I went home and went into my little shed. I have a place up in June Lake, and I uh, took a, a, a blade and uh, punched some holes, and I said, you know, I'm know a little bit about bass fishing so let's what would happen if we added some uh, willow leaves like a lot of bass baits have and uh, took it out the next day oh holy <laughs> smokes did it light up so uh, I fished with it for probably three years tried a different co colors painted them with nail polish in the beginning just to get the right colors and uh, it became super consistent and um, Gavin was graduating from college with uh, his business degree and I just thought hmm this might be a cool little thing so I said hey I got this lure that I haven't seen too many of I've never seen one actually like it and uh, yeah here we are <laughs> <laughs> so you how long because you had it for a while you kept it a secret yeah how long was that secret I fished with it for three years um, and word began to spread we have uh, I, I work at Ernie's Tackle and Ski up in June Lake and um, you know, Jeremy there started posting pictures on his oh, yeah. uh, Facebook page. Uh, my nickname up there is Coach. I used to coach for a long time. Coach has got another one. Coach has got another one on the MOOC. And, and they don't really post unless it's a big fish. So uh, it became big fish after big fish after <laughs> big fish. And uh, pretty soon people in town started asking me. I started getting a lot of requests. So for last year, before we went into production, I built them by hand. And uh, that was a lot. It was a lot of work. Still got my fingers. Um, literally drilling them. With literally <laughs> by hand drilling them. So um, er Ernie, Jeremy and Ernie said, hey, let's just put them up. Let's see what happens. And uh, last season, two seasons ago, I, I couldn't make them fast enough. People would take them out, catch fish with it. I got to get more. I got to get more. And that's when I said, dude, I, I just can't make these anymore. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> now, yeah, here we are. Um, okay, so we're going to dive right into the questions that we've been getting. This one tied back to the story of, like, the beginning. Where did the name The Moot come from? Yeah, well, I, we have four kids in our family. This is one. Uh, but our oldest daughter, when she was a youngster, you know, I took her fishing when she was little. And uh, her nickname was Mookie. And uh, she answers to Mookie today and uh, make sure, you know, that that's just what we call, we called her the Mook, you know, we called her Mookie. So uh, in honor of that, you know, that's where we came up with the Mook. <laughs> yeah, it's very solid. It's a really awesome name. It really is. Uh, it's a lot of fun because I've been with people on the boat. I've had people uh, yell at me from other boats because my boat's identified as the Mook. Uh, the Mook is working. I got one on the Mook, and um, it's just ended up being a really great name. Perhaps you can be Mooked too. <laughs> wow, that was a good one, Dad. Um, so, so one sister is called Mookie. Um, we are going to be having a new color called the Shoppy Sherbert in honor of my other sister. I always have nicknames. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. Um, so, yeah, wink, wink. More colors are coming soon. <laughs> um, Ta-da! So we're going to spoil all of them yet. Our next question is, does the mook impact the lateral line of a trout in other game fish? Sure, that's 
That's uh, as a retired educator, uh, I taught biology for a number of years. Actually, dissected fish and learned how they all work. You dissected and fish? Like, dissected fish, like cut them up and pulled the livers out, pulled the hearts out, saw how they Whoa. work. But we learned, I learned about the lateral line and um, actually growing up in Southern California by some big reservoirs, did a lot of bass fishing. And I noticed a lot of the bass baits had some kind of buzz noise, some kind of rattle noise. Yeah. They all had some kind of noise. Um, rather than just vision to attract fish. So I was like, hmm, trout have a lateral line as well. So um, that's where we really came up with the idea of getting that noise because it triggers that lateral line, which fish use for both protection and um, attacking prey. Oh. So, um, you know, after about 30 feet in the water, color to fish really kind of dissipates and isn't that strong of an of a attractant but it's the noise the, that triggers that lateral line that really makes the mook a little bit different. Um, so not does it just get bites, it gets aggressive bites. You'll see the difference. Um, I do want to say the mook is now officially patent pending with the clickers on it. Um, that was a huge accomplishment for us. And yeah, just wanted to throw that out there to everybody, um, the idea of our clickers. So we got how it affects the lateral line and what that is. Um, so what kind of lead core should I be using for trolling specifically? Yeah, well, it, it kind of depends on your area. In our area, the Eastern Sierra, where this was born, um, I like to use the, the lighter lead core line, like a 12 pound. Um, I'm, excuse me, you can use 12, I use 15. Um, 18 is popular. But if you're in some areas where there's, you know, bigger fish, walleye, muskie, you know, pike, you're gonna use the lead core line that is applicable to you, 24 pound, whatever. Um, you know, as a fisherman, you know what line you need. But um, in general, where I was born, we, we cruise around 15-pound lead core line. Okay, so like for a beginner who knows nothing, yeah. probably, uh, 15 is a good I'd solid. I'd pop 15 on there for okay. sure. Good to know. Yeah. Um, what size and type of leader should I do? And also, what is the leader? Okay, so, <laughs> so yeah, we get, we get all the questions. So you fishermen, bear with me here. Um, yeah, at the end of your lead core line, which is a braided line, um, surround, it surrounds actually a line of lead which has that line sink, um, your leader is gonna be monofilament line or fluorocarbon line, um, and that's really to hide the line from the fish. So recently, as we all know, fluorocarbons have overtaken the market. I've switched to fluorocarbon. I didn't think I ever would, but I have noticed a big difference with the fluorocarbons. So next, what size pound leader should I be using? So we have the length, we have what it is, but now what kind of yeah, length am I, I looking for? I wouldn't really go, you know, when you're trolling, there's a lot of pressure on that line. So I would use, I, um, I generally use eight pound fluoro. That seems to be the best. But of course, if you're in parts of the United States, you know, in the Midwest and, mm -hmm. and up North, I mean, there's gonna be bigger fish. You're gonna, you're gonna wanna put on some bigger leader. Um, and if you have any questions on that, you can get a hold of us at any time. But generally, it's it's dependent upon your area. Mm -hmm. Sounds that right. Um, so how so how long should my leader be? Yeah. So um, again, kind of depending on, on lead core specifically. Yeah. On, so on lead core, again, it, it can range, but I like to have a little bit longer behind that lead core line. Um, and if, you know, as you're getting big fish in, it's also kind of cool to have that longer leader because you know that fight is all, <laughs> which uh, which I love. So um, again, depending on your area, water conditions, water temperature, things like that. But I would I would shoot for anywhere from eight to twenty foot. I've seen them as long as thirty. There you go. All right, thank you. Um, so we have the lead core, we have the leader. How do we put them together? Yeah. So. <laughs> Okay, so the knots we use for uh, attaching that lead core line to uh, our mono or fluorocarbon leaders, um, the two knots are the blood knot and the double uni knot. Both of those are extremely effective for attaching braided line to mono line. Uh, in my early days, I used the blood knot. Nothing wrong with that. But um, I did go on YouTube uh, and I learned how to tie the double uni knot uh, effectively. I work part-time at a tackle shop. Anytime people want their leaders tied, I use the double uni. Love it, quick, simple, but uh, when I say simple, it's simple once you learn it. Yeah. So, um, you know, go to YouTube, check it out. There's a lot of guys that have cool examples of, of that knot. And I just put a link right here below. You can click on it. It will take you right there um, for, after the video. Um, okay, so we're trawling. What speed should I be going? 
Yeah, so in general, I, I hang at, uh, you know, nice speed, two, 2.5 miles per hour. Um, you know, if wind conditions are in your face, you're going to want to speed that up a little. If the wind's behind you, you might want to slow it down a little. Um, but seriously, 2.5 to 3.2 miles per hour is a pretty good range. Uh, but there's been times when, uh, you know, I'm trolling faster for one reason or another and the mook gets them. And boy, you get a get a strike at a little bit faster speed, whew, you're on. <laughs> so, but generally 2.5 to 3.2 is a good trolling speed. Perfect. Yeah, that's fun. Another little bit different one. Can I use a downrigger for the mook? Of course. Um, you know, you downrigger guys in our area, um, downriggers are used. I've used them um, not quite as convenient in our area, but absolutely can be used in the Midwest and on the East with your downriggers for sure. You know, just if, for those of you that don't know what a downrigger is, uh, it just has a lead weight that brings that line directly down to the, to the depth that you want. And when you get that strike on the MOOC, it releases that line and you're fighting the fish and the, the weight's still connected to your downrigger out there. A um, little more technical, but you downrigger guys know what I'm talking about. And so that's typically if you have like deeper waters or yeah. can you use it in anywhere? Yeah, it's typically deeper waters. Um, and for, when you're looking for water temperature, you know, oh. uh, at, sometimes that temperature is going to be a little lower than up top. Um, you know, it's all depending on your conditions, but you downrigger guys, you, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, so we're switching from trolling, we're going to casting. Okay. What kind of line should I be using? What weight? Yeah, yeah. so I, I highly recommend with our, with our current MOOC size, uh, the two to six pound uh, mono when you're fishing, you know, with your spin rig or maybe you have a bait caster, um, that two to six pound range, whichever line you prefer, fluorocarbon or mono, whatever. Um, pretty, pretty easy to cast with, a perfect weight. I'll just give you a, a quick story up in our area the day after uh, opening day this year. If you're familiar with frozen. the Eastern Sierra at all, frozen solid on opening day. <laughs> but we did find about a hundred foot range where every fisherman on the planet that was op up there for opening day was fishing this one little spot. It was so fun. And, uh, <laughs> My son and I, Gavin, we showed up in our mook gear with our mook sweatshirts, and we'd sold mooks the day before on the opener. And it was pretty you know, bold of us to yeah, wear our mook gear. Are, are people gonna <laughs> catch fish with the mook? And here we come showing up with our gear. Yeah. And uh, sure enough, about 20 minutes in, I'm just casting away with the mook and kablooey! Uh, just a nice, you know, two and a half pound, beautiful rainbow, yeah. ready to go and everybody because they all knew and they had all bought a mook the day before because we told them how great it was and all you heard down the whole row is the mook the mook the best part about that was after everybody switching to the mooks yeah. <laughs> and then they caught a couple yeah it was so cool that yeah. was like well, so it, fun not that i know much about business because I'm, I'm a retired educator but uh, actually one of the fishermen there went to his tackle box and pulled the mook out because another guy down the road goes, what's the mook? And he pulled it out of his tackle box and he took it over to him and he goes, yeah, man, it's got these clickers. It's got the, so when you got somebody else selling your product, that's a good place that, to be. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it was such a fun one. And um, because like everybody was like doing their own things that day, but then after we caught a fish on the mook, everybody came up and started talking with us. And someone told me how like the first cast on their Twin Lake Resort, they caught one. And then the got first a, cast of the season. Oh yeah, the, the entire <laughs> season he caught one, and that was um, so amazing. We got some other photos from opening day of uh, this nice brown trout that got there. Um, yeah, that was a fun one. So when casting the mook, what type of what type of retrieve should uh, be used? Excellent retrieve. Um, just answered this for a customer um, the other day. But if you're in a if you're in a big lake with deeper water, you know you can let it sink. But the the retrieve I really suggest is like a uh, a one, two, three with a flick and let it drop a bit. Uh, one, two, three with the flick. And as it's dropping, just let those those clickers flutter and that's when the strike hits. It's do 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 boom. And with those things fluttering. So I, I totally recommend that retrieve. Um, but of course, uh, I've 
tried a number of different retrieves where I'll cast it and just keep the tip of my rod jiggling the whole time while I'm reeling oh, it yeah. in. And that keep and that's what I was actually doing um, on that day after the opening day, just kind of tipping the tip of my rod, making sure it was clicking as I reel it in. Uh, that's effective. Now, if you're in shallow water, like in some of the alpine lakes, um, it, it's good. It's a, nice to have a quick retrieve and then maybe just a little stop and then another quick retrieve because in those shallow waters in the high mountain lakes, you know, there's a lot of stuff to get caught on. So we recommend keeping it up near the top and uh, just had some great success stories the other day come back into Ernie's uh, tackle shop in June Lake on those um, Alpine lakes. So there's a couple different retrieves. You know your area, but the one I absolutely recommend is that like one, two, three, let it drop. One, two, three, let it drop. And it's usually on the drop when you get to hit. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. That was awesome. So, uh, one of the last questions is, why is the mook a little bit more expensive compared to other similar baits? Yeah, so I get this all the time. I, I work part-time in a tackle shop, and, and I have to explain it, so um, I'll explain it now. Most most lures, um, you know, with a, with a blade like this, they'll just have one hole in the bottom with one split ring to the hook. Well, this one has three holes in the bottom, three split rings, a hook, and two willow leaves. So a lot more involved in not just um, punching three holes into the bait, but actually the assembly um, okay. of the lure. So everything's a little bit more expensive. There's, you know, there's a lot more going on. And, uh, and again, quality. And, and we're using the highest quality components. Yeah. Um, after I quit making them by hand, Gavin started researching where we can go, and then he always sent me everything for me to test it out before we, we put it together. Um, and we've come up with just a really fine product that is really successful. And we really hope we're building memories of, of your fishing life. Yeah, definitely. And even just, it's been really fun because even now, even with my dad, like if we go fishing, it, the MOOC is like just a no brainer. Like it's just becoming like common, especially in the area where um, dad works and all of where he founded it. Everybody knows of the MOOC by now. And everybody who just goes out, it just, I already got one in my toggle box. I use it every day. Like there, it's an old reliable at this point, and it's brand new. So that's it's a huge accomplishment for us little guys. Yeah. If you don't have one in your tackle box, get one. Yeah. You, you trust me. You'll you'll love it. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you everybody for watching and getting to the end with us. Um, I hope we answered some of your questions that you've been having. We have. Um, a little spoiler alert, we have a few more colors of the 1.5 um, lure that we have right now. We have a few more colors, we've been getting a lot of recommendations, so stay Specifically, tuned. we got a blue coming out for all you folks up in Canada. There'll be a nice, beautiful blue coming out that we want you to really take that mook out and hammer it with the blue. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. In Canada, that's where we've been getting a lot of them. Um, and then also another spoiler that's not really a spoiler is we have a larger size coming. Yeah, so what type of fish with a larger size? This is for go? you. This is for you Midwest guys and out there on the East Coast. Uh, you know, we've actually interesting story. We've had a few people contact us that they actually jig these for smallmouth bass. So jigging is pulling up and letting oh, yeah. it drop, pulling it up for smallmouth bass. But our bigger size will specifically target those walleye, muskie, pike, all you guys in the Midwest, up north. Um, we want you to embrace the mook. And we've had so many requests for that. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, startup is startup. It takes a bit, but, but we're there. So uh, Midwest, East Coast, let's get it on. Yeah. Get the mook. <laughs> so when you see them, um, grab it. Grab it. <laughs> um, so now you met the two guys that are running the show at the MOO. Um, I want to say thank you, Dad, for um, all of the support that you've given me here and that you've, um, in not just making a product, but also like emotional support of running the business on my own and give me the encouragement for that. Um, I I'm do glad he's doing it and not me. <laughs> You're tired. Enjoy I it. just fish. Yeah. Um, all right. So I do want to do a quick shout out to, and a thank you, a huge thank you for our stores that are carrying the Mook Lure. I'm gonna do a quick shout out for them if you would like to see them. Sure, uh, our newest addition has been Lake Gregory Bait and Tackle. Ernie's uh, Tackle and Ski in June Lake was our first one. First one, uh, Jeremy there made sure last year when I was making them by hand, they were on the shelf and that's really gave us the encouragement to go. Uh, both Big Bear and Lake Arrowhead Sporting Goods they are carrying carry us. All the stores, they yes. carry all the colors. All colors, and June Lake Marina where I keep my boat, I fish all over, but keep my boat on June Lake Marina, they're carrying it. 
Um, so every time I come off, what are you catching those fish on? The mook. Um, Kittred Sports and Mammoth, they were one of our first ones too. Um, we did get a call later on from Trout Fitter in Mammoth, which is actually a fly fishing shop, but they wanted to carry the mook as well. They were getting a lot of requests. Uh, Silver Lake Re Resort carries all colors, and uh, they make sure I always have them on the, the hook. And if you ever have, need a great breakfast when you're in the Eastern Sierra, Silver Lake Resort is the place yes. to go. And then finally, which was awesome, we got uh, Crawley Lake General Store. Um, they took a chance on us, and uh, they're selling the MOOC. So everybody who's supporting us, I believe we're supporting them as well. And uh, we're real proud of the people that are carrying our bait. I want to do a quick shout out to Crawley Lake. They just got a new pizza oven. It oh. this looks so good. Oh, yeah. And so I got to go down, hook that up. I'm very excited for that. <laughs> um, all right. Thank you so much. For hey, if you want to carry it in your store, oh, we want to get you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Feel free to um, contact me. It's Gavin Burt and Mook Lure. I just, or literally just to contact us on the website page, yep. whatever is easiest. Yep. Mooklure.com. Um, we do have great wholesale pricing, too, for all the stores out there um, that are very competitive, too. And I think people will see us at uh, the big Southern Cal fishing shows this year. We're going to hit them up big. I think we're going to Bart Hall. Yes, we're going, going to Bart, Bart Hall. Hall. Pacific Coast. Pacific Coast. So we'll be there. Stop by. Say hello. Grab a sticker. And, and buy some mooks. Another fun event. October 6th, 7th, and 8th is going to be the Trout Fest by Western Outdoor News, in which... The Mook is going to be sponsoring. It's going to be one of our first sponsorships, and so I'm very, very excited. We're going to be set up there. The winners are going to be getting some Mooks and some Mook gear and some water bottles, hats. I'm going to have the whole shebang there. And and specifically with Big Bear, we've, we've had a couple fishermen who really, really just found incredible success with the Mook at Big Bear, and that's kind of how we got into the Big Bear and Arrowhead and Lake Gregory area. Um, yeah. Super successful there. Um, so come on up to the contest. Yeah, get a mook it. out in the water and see what you could do. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, I do want to. Um, yeah. Um, so, um, thank you again. Um, ta da! Thank you, Dad. <laughs> Beautiful, man. Beautiful. Beautiful. I think you could get some stuff out of that. <laughs>